Focus your attention on the breath and look after it, both the breath and your intention. Looking after the breath means noticing where you feel it, how it feels when it comes in, how it feels when it goes out, and checking to see if you can figure out what kind of breathing feels good, what kind of breathing is best for the body right now. You can experiment. Longer breathing, shorter breathing, deeper, more shallow, heavier, lighter. Or you can simply pose the question in the mind each time you breathe in, what kind of breathing would feel good now, and see how the body responds. Other times you have to force the body to breathe longer for a bit, so stretch the muscles that have been tightened. There are various ways of looking after the breath, trying to figure out what works for you right now. And look after your attention to make sure that it stays. And it's very likely that after a while it won't, it, something else will come in and pull you off. And you have to learn how to deal with that without getting frustrated. Very patiently, bring it back. Be firm, but patient. And if it wanders off again, bring it back again. Each time you come back, try to reward yourself instead of punishing yourself. If you punish yourself, the mind isn't one going to stay. It's going to find even more reasons to get away. But if you reward yourself, then the mind will be more and more inclined to want to come back. This is an important principle in the meditation, is learning how to deal with your mistakes. how to correct them without getting upset. First, of course, it's important that you recognize you've made a mistake. Some people say you can meditate and just let the mind wander around, and just as long as you know where it's going, it's okay. But it can go into all kinds of places that it shouldn't be going. And you don't get the benefits from the meditation nearly as much as a lot as when you do when you get the mind to stay in one place and finally settle down. So. First, recognize a mistake as a mistake. As the Buddha said, when you see your own foolishness, yet you're to that extent wise. Notice he's not saying when you see that you are a fool. When you see that your actions have been foolish, it's an important difference. If an action has been foolish, you can change. If you're a fool, it's hard to change. So the first thing to do is recognize that the action is what was foolish. Recognize that it was a mistake, and do your best not to repeat it. And the Buddha's way of rewarding yourself, this deals with mistakes in any area of life, is to spread thoughts of goodwill. Goodwill to others, goodwill to yourself. Goodwill to others. If your action that was a mistake had a bad impact on others, you want to make sure I don't want to harm anyone again because you know that that harm is going to come back to you. And so a good way of making up your mind not to repeat the mistake is to try to cultivate goodwill as much as you can. Goodwill for yourself, of course, is important, because if you're down on yourself, you really berate yourself heavily, you lose your enthusiasm for the practice, you, you lose your morale, and then it's difficult to pick yourself up again. So remind yourself, you really do want true happiness. And the question that comes in, do you deserve true happiness? That's a question you've got to put aside. As far as the Buddha is concerned, that question doesn't enter into the equation. He taught the end of suffering. And he didn't ask you first, are you suffering because you deserve to or not? Whether the suffering is quote-unquote deserved or not, this is the way out. After all, he himself came from mistakes. And realize that by getting down on yourself, being really remorseful about the mistake, it's not going to undo it. And it can often weaken your resolve. You look in the Jataka tales, the stories they tell that the Buddha's previous lifetimes leading up to his becoming Buddha. And it's interesting to notice that he breaks the precepts in those stories. 
except for one. He never lies. But the other of the five precepts get broken here and there. Another Mahayana explanation of that is, well, that you break the precepts out of compassion. But it's obvious in the stories that the breaking the precept is not a compassionate act. It was a stupid act. So the Buddha himself was coming from a place where he'd made mistakes. He began to realize okay, from his mistakes that's how he became Buddha, by recognizing them and making a resolve not to repeat them. Even in his last life as Buddha, he had made, he made a big mistake when he went off for those six years of austerities. He had gotten a vision about the importance of getting away from sensual pleasure. He said it was like a log. If you leave it in the water, there's no way that it's going to be able to use timber to start a fire. Even if you take it out of the water, but it's still wet inside, you still can't make a fire out of it. It's only when it's dried out that's when you can make a fire. Being in the water, of course, meant indulging in sensuality. Being out of the water but still wet means you may not be indulging it, but you're thinking about it an awful lot. It's only when you're dried out, not thinking about sensuality, that's, that's when you can have a fire. He made a mistake in interpreting that. He thought it meant all pleasure. So he did everything he could to get away from pleasure. He starved himself, forced himself not to breathe. Try this for six years. He finally realized it was a mistake. The image was not saying that all pleasure was bad, simply pleasure that's taken up with our fascination with sensuality. The fantasies we have, the plans we make, these things make it difficult for the mind to gain awakening. But there's another pleasure, there's a pleasure of concentration. And that is blameless, and it's actually part of the path. So did the Buddha berate himself for all those wasted six years? No. He just recognized it was a mistake, picked himself up, moved on. We have the advantage that he made a lot of those mistakes for us, so he can show, show there is a way out. He didn't have that guarantee. For him, it was constantly having to use his ingenuity. Once he'd realized he made a mistake, well, what would be an alternative step, what would be an alternative path of action? And through trial and error, he finally made made a trial and success. So even though we have his guidance, still we make a lot of mistakes. Because part of the mind says, well, I can go off someplace else, I can have my own path. Or I can take some time off from the path, enjoy myself on the side with my fantasies. But then we realize, okay, this is a mistake. And he shows us that there is another way. It doesn't have to involve suppressing your breath or starving yourself. You develop an alternative pleasure. The same principle applies in all areas of life. We make mistakes. We have to find there's an alternative source of well-being inside, so we don't beat ourselves up over the mistakes we've made. Developing goodwill not only puts your mind in the right space, but also gets the mind into concentration. It's one of the topics of concentration. You can combine it with the breath, thinking about how when you breathe in a way that's comfortable for the body, you're really showing yourself goodwill. And learning how to work with the breath energies in the body, it's good for your health means you'll be less of a burden on other people, because there are diseases that come from the flow of energy in the body being blocked. So you can breathe through those blockages. You feel better inside, and you're less of a burden on others. So it's important that when you recognize a mistake and resolve not to repeat it, but you also give yourself the strength not to repeat it. And part of the way of giving yourself that strength is not beat yourself up over the fact that you may have wasted years doing something really foolish. 
or maybe it'd been just one time you did something foolish, but it was really weighing you down. Don't let it weigh you down. Recognize that we're all coming from mistakes. As a famous philosopher once said, we live forward, but we understand backward. In other words, we can look back on our lives and see a mistake, but when you're looking forward into the future, it's hard to see what will be a mistake. We're fortunate we have the guidance of people like the Buddha to warn us that these things are going to be mistakes regardless. That's why we have the precepts. That's why we have all the teachings of the Dharma. And it's up to us to learn to take on that guidance and say, yes, that really does apply to me. I'm not a person who has exceptions. But I'm also a person who's willing and able to practice. I said last night, the, the development of healthy conceit, i.e., other people can do this, I can do it. They're human beings, I'm a human being. They can do it, why can't I? So your ability is there. And the question of deserving, as I said, is something you can just put aside. We may have made mistakes in the past, but we can do something right in the present moment. So we should cultivate that fact, cultivate that freedom of choice, because that's where the path lies. <laughs>